Have you ever pondered the mysteries of the Bronze Age, a time shrouded in the mists of history? Ever wondered about the ancient battles that shaped the world as we know it today? Today we delve into one such ancient battle, a conflict that took place around 3,200 years ago, known as the Tolense Battle. The Tolense Battle is named after the Tolense River in northeastern Germany, where the remains of this prehistoric clash were discovered. It's a battle that remained hidden for millennia, only coming to light in the late 20th century. Our chronicle begins in the Bronze Age, a period marked by the use of bronze tools and weapons. The year was approximately 1200 BC. The location? The verdant valley of the Tolenza River. It was in this serene setting that one of the largest and most brutal battles of the Bronze Age was about to unfold. The first signs of this savage conflict were discovered in 1996 when an amateur archaeologist found a single human arm bone sticking out of the ground near the river. The bone had an embedded flint arrowhead, a telltale sign of violence. This discovery led to further excavations, unearthing a battlefield that spanned over one kilometer along the river. As archaeologists continued their work, they unearthed the bones of over 100 individuals, along with weapons, personal items, and even horse remains. The skeletal injuries indicated a violent death, with many showing signs of sharp force trauma, consistent with injuries from swords, spears, and arrows. Through scientific analysis, including isotopic and DNA studies, it was concluded that the warriors were not local, but from all over Europe. This fact suggests that the Tolens battle was not a local skirmish, but a large-scale conflict involving hundreds, perhaps even thousands of warriors. The battle appears to have been a ferocious encounter, with both sides sustaining heavy losses. The river valley turned into a killing field as warriors fought hand-to-hand, -hand, their bronze weapons clashing in a deadly dance of death. In the aftermath of the battle, the dead were left where they fell, their bodies slowly sinking into the marshy ground. The river valley, once a peaceful place, was transformed into a silent witness to one of the bloodiest battles of the Bronze Age. Here I've built a PCA plot with some of the warriors from the Talens uh, battle. Now you can see uh, you can you can make an assumption that when you have a battle that is this big, usually it is fought between people of different ethnicities. Usually it's two different ethnicities that are going at each other, that dislike each other. And what do we see here? We see the most divergent samples are uh, WES-54 and WES-56. These are the most divergent samples where WES-56 seems to have some kind of an affinity towards Yamnayans and... Um, basically in the Europeans, whereas WES-54 seems to have uh, affinity towards Turbars and Neolithic, Neolithic Anatolian farmers. So this is kind of where all of these samples lie. Now on the same PCA, we, we can s sort of separate them into two groups. Uh, first group would be the most Yamne group, where uh, the most obvious example of this group is WES-56, who is very extremely Yamne. And and for the second group, this is sort of the most heavily farmer group. So it seems that this might have been a conflict between um, people who had more farmer ancestry, not entirely farmer, but more farmer ancestry, versus people who had more uh, hunter-gatherer and Yamne ancestry. And I've actually made a little model for them uh, as a mixture of bell beakers and corded ware. What do they score? I just modeled bell beaker, corded ware, uh, Barson, Neolithic, and Western hunter-gatherer. I used these as the sources. And... We see that VES-54 seems to be mostly Bell Beaker plus uh, Barson Neolithic. So it's actually even more, uh, it's actually even more Anatolian farmer than Bell Beakers are. And for uh, VES-56, this is our uh, northern guy. He's actually getting more of this mostly corded wear plus a little bit Bell Beaker plus some Western Hunter Gatherer. So he's very corded wear. This, I think this might have been a battle between an ethnicity that was mostly derived from corded wear, represented by uh, VES-56, with some ethnicity that was mostly derived from bell beakers, represented by VES-54. And as you can see, Tolens River Valley on the map here is right on the intersection between uh, bell beaker and corded wear habitat in the Bronze Age. Now let's move on to the autosomal DNA results of VES-54. This is our southern or bell beaker individual. Uh, he's got Y-DNA R1B, which is nowadays very common in Western Europe, and this is what he is predicted to look like. His uh, phenotype prediction is hazel eyes, snub-shaped nose, and brown hair. 
uh, Ysec is actually predicting him to have brown eyes and brown hair and light skin. With Snipper Free, he's predicted to have green or hazel eyes plus white skin plus black hair, actually. He is heterozygous for BH1, BH2, and BH3. And uh, BH4 status is undetermined. He wasn't genotyped for it, so I can't really tell you. Uh, but he does have BH1, BH2, and BH3. Maybe not entirely, but it's heterozygous, which means he had an ancestor who had homozygous BH1 and BH2 and BH3, which is pretty, pretty cool. Uh, he's got some genotypes for lighter traits, skin, hair, and eyes in SLC for 24A4, TIRP1, SLC 45A2. He has some genotypes for darker skin, um, namely ASIP and KTLG. And based on his genotype in SLC 24A4, he's got darker eyes, higher rods of central heterochromia. He does not have East Asian EZAR, and he does not have derived IRF4. Uh, well, there's a couple of different IRF4 variations, but this is the one that's sort of the main IRF4 variation uh, that has the most impact, and he doesn't have derived IRF4 here. So, no ginger, no blue eye hunter-gatherer mutation. Most European hunter-gatherers actually have it, but it's super rare in modern Europeans. This is another variation I did not show in my phenotype slide, but I should have because it's super rare and it's, it's kind of important. It leads to blue eyes, blonde hair, and lighter skin, and this variant is most typical, most commonly found in the Mediterranean area. Uh, now he's got this genotype for increased risk of obesity. Uh, he's got a genotype for worse cognitive function and uh, lower cortical volume. And uh, he's got a genotype, another genotype for increased risk of obesity and type 2 diabetes. And he did not have the European lactose persistence mutation, which does not necessarily mean he was lactose intolerant. Uh, it just means he's more likely to be lactose intolerant. And in fact, there's other mutations that have to do with this. They're not European per se. Uh, he does not have East Asian alcohol flush. Uh, so when he drinks alcohol, like a lot of people when they're East Asian and they drink alcohol and they have alcohol flush reaction, they're going to flush up and their, red, uh, their cheeks turn red, but he doesn't have this. Now moving on to polygenic traits, he's got a high risk score for schizophrenia. Uh, he's got a average, actually low risk score for type 2 diabetes. He's got a very low risk score for coronary heart disease. And he's got an average risk score for asthma. This is what he scores with MDLPK11, and notice how much Neolithic he is scoring and how little Caucasus Hunter Gather, which is mislabeled as EHG he's scoring. He's only scoring 17% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer. And uh, he's actually uh, scoring 35% European Hunter Gatherer, so quite a lot of European Hunter Gatherer admixture. And this is what he scores with Point DNA LK10. Once again, you can see there's very low Caucasus Hunter Gatherer. It's only 15% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer. Now, ENF here does not represent Anatolian Neolithic farmers. It represents something a lot more southern than Anatolian Neolithic farmers. Um, so, uh, Anatolian Neolithic farm farmers get modeled as ENF plus Western Hunter Gatherer, so he's not as northern as you might expect him to be by looking at these results. And he is closest to Spanish and French with the Oracle, actually. He's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Northeast Spanish plus Estonian or Northeast Spanish plus Finnish, but mostly Northeast Spanish. You see, it's 81% Northeast Spanish plus 19% Estonian, so mostly Northeast Spanish. This is his result with Eurogenes K13. Once again, you can see he's not scoring much Baltic. He's only scoring 7% Baltic. And he's not scoring any West Asian. So he doesn't have any of the components that peak in Yamne. Uh, you know, very little in the European ancestry here. He does have a lot of West Med and North Atlantic, which are kind of components you will most likely, you will, uh, that peak in the Basques. So he's quite Basque according to this result. He is closest to Spanish from Aragon, followed by Spanish from uh, Valencia. And I don't think there is Basque uh, with the Oracle here. If there was Basque with the Oracle, he would be scoring mostly Basque. But he is getting modeled as a mixture of Spanish from, from Aragon plus Southeast English, or Spanish from Aragon plus West Scottish at 10%. Uh, mostly very Spanish result with Eurogenes K13. This is what he scores with MZLP K16. Once again, you can see quite low step, only 16% step and only 9% Caucasian, so uh, this this a person isn't in the European, he does have step admixture, and evidently I think he was an Indo-European individual, but he has less Indo-European admixture than, say, modern inhabitants of this area, less, much less Indo-European admixture than modern Northern Germans. He's actually closest to Spanish once again with the Oracle, and getting more of the mixture of Spanish plus Latvian, or Spanish plus Finnish, but still mostly Spanish, you see 74% Spanish, plus 26% finish, so it's three quarters Spanish plus one quarter finish. And this is what he scores with Dodecat K12B, mostly is scoring Atlantic Mediterranean, which is kind of the southern, southwestern European component, 
and um, he's not scoring much Gidrosia, only 3% Gidrosia. Typical for Northwestern European is 10 or 8, 8 to 10% Gidrosia. And he's closest to Belers. Uh, excuse me if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but that's a Spanish group. And he's actually getting more as a mixture of 52% uh, Basque plus 48% Bulgarian, or 80% Spanish plus 19% Bulgarian, or 84% Spanish plus 16% Bulgarian. So it seems to be a mixture of mostly Spanish plus a little bit of Bulgarian with this calculator here. And this is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. I'm not going to show you the Oracle because it's, it's not really good. Uh, and this is not a very good result because it was only based on like 1.5k SNPs. So it's it's a pretty low quality result, but he's very little very little ancestral of Eurasian here and a lot of Western components. This is a very Western individual and with Gidros AK3, uh, he's scoring mostly West Eurasian. Very, very modern individual once again. This individual already had most of the modern European genetic drift and that's why he's scoring mostly West Eurasian here because he's he does have a lot of West Eurasian genetic drift. Now let's move on to the second sample. This is the other uh, the other end of the extremes. This is the other the other pole of the ancestry. Same area, same region, same time, but completely different genetics. This individual has haplogroup R1A Z283, which is nowadays most common in uh, northeastern Europe, and this individual is uh, pretty much as different as you can get uh, from the previous guy. This is what he's predicted to look like. With Maina Shakot, he is predicted to have hazel color eyes, snub shaped nose, and brown hair, similar to the previous guy in coloring. Uh, with Snipper Free, he's predicted to have green or hazel eyes, brown hair, and white skin. Uh, and with uh, Ysec, he's all predicted to have brown hair, white skin, and actually brown eyes. Uh, his heterozygous for blue eye haplotype 1, BH2, BH3, just like the previous sample. And BH4 is undetermined. Very similar in terms of coloring to the previous sample, but lighter skin. Uh, notice the two derived variants of the Ketogis variation that has to do with skin tone. Previous sample only had one, uh, which would lead to darker skin color. So this guy had slightly lighter skin than the previous individual, and he also had two derived variants in IRF4's mutation that have to do with ginger hair, blue eyes, pale skin. This is the hunter-gatherer mutation. Most European hunter-gatherers had this mutation, and it's super rare in modern Europeans, and this guy has had it. He, he got two derived variants here. The previous individual did not have any derived variants here, so that, that's, a, that's a difference here. And in SLC 24A4, he's got two derived variants once again, which causes lighter eyes and a lesser likelihood of heterochromia. Uh, this is another difference between this individual and the previous individual. Now for TPCN2, he's got one derived variant here, which is a super rare blonde variant, and he does not have derived EZAR, no East Asian EZAR, no East Asian facial traits. And unlike VS54, uh, this one is able to digest milk. He does have the European lactose persistence mutation. Uh, once, once again, this is a mutation that's very common in Northern and Central Europeans today. I don't have it, but it's very common. Uh, but in Bronze Age, it was a lot less common. And he has this very exotic genotype, which greatly reduces the risk of type 1 diabetes. Really cool to, genotype to have. By the way, these two individuals, they are not from like one one single culture. They're from two different cultures that were fighting. And just because they died in the Tolens Valley doesn't mean that's where they lived. It's very possible that this individual, for example, based on his GED match results, came from somewhere in Eastern Europe, somewhere in Lithuania, for example. And, um, okay, rant over. Now, he does have uh, one allele in the MTHFR, which causes uh, problems with processing folic acid. This can be easily supplemented with folic acid supplements. And he's got this genotype for increased risk of boldness. Uh, actually, two copies of the risk allele, which is G here. And he's got this genotype, which is fetuses with this genotype may cause maternal preeclampsia, as well as hypertension. So it's not the mothers that have this genotype that have to worry. It's, uh, it's the mothers that have fetuses that have this genotype that have to worry about uh, maternal preeclampsia and hypertension. Moving on to polygenic traits, he's got an average risk score for type uh, 2 diabetes, he's got an average risk score for uh, schizophrenia, he's got a low risk score for Parkinson's disease, and he's got a low risk score for bipolar disorder. And now look at his score with MZLPK11. He's only scoring 20% Neolithic. Compare that with the 44% that was scored by WES54. This is a completely different individual, completely different ethnicity from the pre previous individual. And he's actually scoring 30% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer, which is a lot of Caucasus Hunter Gatherer admixture, uh, much more than uh, what's typical for you know German people today in this er in this region. And he's closest to Corded Ware from Estonia, followed by Poltavka. Uh, so he's very Indo-European in terms of ancestry. And for 
upon DNA LK12, he's actually scoring typical stuff for a Eastern European today. 50% European Hunter Gatherer, 24% Caucasus Hunter Gatherer, 21% Anatolian Neolithic. Not a Western European result whatsoever. He's actually closest to Belarusians followed by Mardvins. So I think this individual came to the battle site from somewhere in Eastern Europe, such as Belarus, or Belarus, or maybe Ukraine, or maybe Lithuania, some somewhere in Eastern Europe is this individual's origin. And uh, this is what he scores with Eurogene's K13, and he's actually scoring stuff that's kind of similar to me. Like, if you take his result, and you remove, like, 10% from the North Atlantic and the Baltic, you make him 10% less white, and you replace that 10% with, like, East Med, Red Sea, East Asian, Siberian, Amerindian, and Sub-Saharan, so if you, if you make him 10% less white, you basically get me. Very similar, but otherwise very similar. Like if you look like uh, West Mediterranean, we have similar score. Uh, West Asian, we have similar score. Pretty similar to me, actually. And with the Oracle, he's closest to Poles, followed by Estonians, followed by Russians from Smolensk. He's not really similar to Northern Russians or Mardvins, because he doesn't have any um, East Asian or Siberian admixture. Right, and he's actually getting modeled as a mixture of Lithuanian plus Irish, or Lithuanian plus Swedish, or Lithuanian plus Norwegian. So very Eastern European result once again, or like Polish plus Estonian, half Polish, half Estonian. It's another model for him here. Uh, this is what he scores with MDLP K16 Modern. Um, very typical stuff to score for somebody who's a Northern European. So you see the big difference here. The previous individual, WES54, was a very Southwestern European in terms of ancestry, similar to Spanish people, Portuguese, various Mediterraneans. This guy is the opposite of that. This guy is as Northern European, as Northeastern European as you can get. This is what he scores with Dodicat K12B. Do you see the huge difference between this guy and WES54? Like, it's a huge difference. They were buried at the same site. But they were definitely not part of the same culture. They were entirely different culturally. And I'm, I'm thinking that they were fighting against each other. Maybe uh, one of them killed the other. And then, you know, they were fighting against each other. Because there's no way that they were part of the same ethnicity, right? This guy is scoring 60.9% North European compared uh, to the previous individual who was scoring like 20% North European. And he's scoring 23% Atlantic Mediterranean compared to the previous individual who was scoring 50-something percent Atlantic Mediterranean. It's a big difference, huge difference. This guy is also more Gidrosian. Uh, you can see he's scoring 6% Gidrosia. Still kind of low Gidrosia for a Northwestern European, but I think this is about average for what uh, Northeastern Europeans score. This is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Do you see the big difference in numbers? Once again, this is not a very good result, but do you see the big difference in numbers? The previous guy was scoring... 45% West European Hunter Gatherer and 45% Natufian. This guy is 20% less Natufian, 20% less Southern, and 10% uh, more Ancestral North Eurasian than the previous individual. And this is what he scores with Gidrosia K3, uh, mostly scoring West Eurasian. I'm mainly doing this to show you guys <coughs> that these two individuals were from the opposite corners of Europe. They were not the same ethnicity. And they were most likely fighting against each other. And if I had to make a bet on what kind of cultures they represented, I would I would maybe say that um, one group was early Baltoslavs and the other group was uh, early Celts. That's my uh, opinion. Thanks for watching my video until the end. You can download these genomes in 23andMe format from link which is in the description. Thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.